Once we express our desire and set our intention, how do we go about fulfilling it and making sure that they come true, that our dreams come true? Well, we're going to talk about this today. This is Tom Kieran with the Be Something Wonderful Studio of Higher Consciousness in San Diego, California, where we help you level up and become the highest version of yourself. Welcome back, guys. Got a great lesson for you today. So I asked you the question, how do we do it? How do we, once we have our, we set our intention, we know what our desires are, we express our desires to that, to that God consciousness, to that greater part of us, that higher, greater, wiser part of us, that divine part of us, right? That inner being, if you want to call it that. How do we do it? Well, it's really a trick question <laughs> because we talked about this in terms when we were talking about Joe Dispenza in his book, uh, Breaking the Habit of Becoming You, that, um, that you determine the what and then leave it to the field of infinite potential, that divine consciousness, that God inside you to determine the how. So let's take a look at this today. Here's the title of my lesson, guys. It's yours. Stop doubting and worrying about the how. This is, how we, this is really how you put roadblocks in front of yourself. You, you start worrying and anticipating and, 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 and trying to determine the how. Um, Neville got it. We're going to talk about his teachings today. He, called, he calls the basic desire the word of God, right? God's word. And uh, he calls the secondary desire trying to... De the how, and then the end, the actual fulfillment as the word made flesh. So I love how he ties this into scripture. It makes real good sense, guys. And it, and it again, remember, Neville looks at scripture or looked at scripture as a psychological drama. So the characters and the people that are mentioned in the Bible are characters and, and allegories and stories in, in our consciousness that's always demonstrating to you that power within you. Great way to look at it. So what did the Bible say? What did Jesus say? I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last, Revelation 22, 13. So what's God or Jesus saying there? It's saying that, that, that the beginning, the, the word or your desires are set, the end is set, so you have to think of the end, but leave the how to me. So this is, remember, you are the I am. That's your, that's your, that's our awareness. The I am awareness, that part of that greater part of us is saying that the beginning and the end is all you need to know. The beginning and the end, the first and last. How it's done is, is left to God. That's the mystery. Why is it a mystery? Why is it, guys? Because how could we possibly know how when we don't have that broader perspective? It's the field of infinite possibilities. It's the field of everything that is, was, or ever be done. God has all resources and more, an infinite amount of resources at his, at his um, hands to make, to make your dreams come true. How could we possibly, in our little reality here, in our limited minds, in our limitations, no matter how smart you think you are, guys, you don't have, you don't have the God perspective. <laughs> how can we figure it out, right? And why would we want to? As soon as we try to figure it out, we're putting limitations on ourselves. As soon as we start doubting and trying to figure out the how, we are creating obstacles and limitations, even though you think you're, you're trying to figure it out. So let's go on to this. God speaks to you through your desires, your intention. So it, that's the word of God, those desires. In, in the way Neville looks at desire, uh, we, we've talked about desire, how, they, how depending on what, how you feel, it's not really the word itself, but how you feel about it, right? These are our intentions. This is our dream. This is the consciousness that we want to condition from that I am, from that unconditioned awareness, the total source, the fabric of all there is, right? That God consciousness, the quantum field. It's the wave we want to collapse, right? From the quantum field. God, I am reveals that the first and the last, right? So the I am, God, you and me, that greater part of us, that Christ within us, reveals the first and last, the word of God, our desire. And then the word of God made flesh, that's the fulfillment, 
When the Word of God is made flesh, that's the fulfillment of desire. That's your dreams coming true. That's your desire coming uh, manifesting, right? That's your un unconditioned awareness being conditioned to your desires, to your ideal. Pretty amazing, pretty powerful stuff. The secret, though, the secret of his ways, the how, you don't know. How could we know? How could we know? They, 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 it's, it's not it, no, so much as a secret as that it's impossible to know. There's so many, there's so much at the fingertips. It's infinite ways that you can, you can get your desire fulfilled. We think in limitations. And here's the other thing, guys. As soon as we set a desire, we start doubting it right away. We start trying to figure out the how or saying or start doubting that it can even be fulfilled because maybe it's too big or or we just doubt it anyway right so when we if you think big and set a big desire you automatically start messing it up by piling on doubt and fear trying to figure out the how trying to trying to do god's work that's your i am that's god's work it's your work to figure out what and to uh in the end what what the word, your desire, and think from the end. Think of your wish fulfilled. What would it feel like? What would it be like? That's your job. The rest is God. Desire is God's word. I love that. I love that. I love the way Neville talks about desire. Right? We don't have to make desire a bad thing. Wanting things in desire is good. It's God's word, right? God's word made flesh. Right? This is... This is powerful, powerful stuff today, guys. Fulfillment, God's word made flesh. That's the fulfillment. So the word is the desire. The fulfillment is God's word. It, it's, the, it's, the, um, it's the omega. God's, that's the fulfillment. It's the end. That's the fulfillment he desire. It's the last. It's the fulfillment, right? So, and here's another thing. This is what I wanted to talk about. I was just talking about this. Don't add, uh, in the Bible it says, don't add to the Word of God. What does that mean, don't add to the Word of God? Don't start putting more, adding to your desire how you're going to do it. That's what it means by that, right? Don't start piling up with, oh, okay, now that I set my desire, my, i got to figure out how to do it. That's God's work. Don't add to God's, God's Word or to the Word of God, right? That initial desire that came from that I am. You, that I am, right? And then it also says, nor take away from God's word. What does that mean? That means, guys, when we have a big desire, sometimes we think, when you, when you start trying to add to it, and you go, no, it's too big, I can't do it. And you start doubting yourself, and you start diminishing your desire. You're taking away from God's word. You, get, you, you set less a goal for yourself, a less ideal, right? Maybe I can't build a business that big. Maybe I can't have... Uh, this, this ideal mate that I want. Maybe I can't have financial independence and travel the world. You start immediately putting doubt and, and start taking away from God's word, right? This is powerful. Or we get, we, and we get, how do we get, why do we start taking away? Because we first start adding to it. <laughs> when we add to God's word, we start adding to how are we going to do it? And once you get into that mess, then you go, oh my God, this is too big. I, you, you, can't, you cannot possibly know how God's going to do it. He has, the, he has the infinite power of the universe. He has unlimited possibilities. It's infinite. And so when you get into that, then you start taking away from God's word. Okay, that's too big. I can't figure out the how. Leave it to God. Leave it to that I am. We are that. I am that I am. Remember what uh, God said to Moses. Who, who shall I said sent me? I am. Tell him that I am sent you. I am that I am. That's you guys. This is Neville Goddard's teaching. Very powerful stuff today. We hit desire. We, we hit another way of uh, how we block our desires, right? Using, uh, using scripture to, 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 to figure, to, to uh, support it. This is powerful, right? This is what we do. We set a desire and then we try to add to it, figuring out how to do it. That's what we mean by adding to it. And then as soon as we start doing that, we put ourselves in fear mode, start worrying too much. And so we take away and we, we min diminish our desires. And then we just get satisfied. Okay, I'm never, I'm never going to do it. It's never going to happen. And then you stay in that energy. 
This is powerful today. This is Neville Goddard's teaching. We're going to talk more about this. There's always more to come. This is Tom Karen with the Be Something Wonderful Studio of Higher Consciousness in San Diego, California, where we help you level up and become the highest and best version of yourself. Guys, don't forget to hit the subscription button. That's me with a caricature, a caricature of me with a headset. There's also a Be Something Wonderful logo that shows throughout the video in the right-hand corner that you can hit, hit the notification bell. And, and write, write us and like the video and share the, these videos. This is how we get the word out, <laughs> the, the message out, right? Yeah. Okay, guys, until next time, this is Tom Karen. We'll see you soon.